What's up, boys and girls? This is Spit Logic, and today I am going to talk about the comparison between the MPC1 and the SP44 Mark II. So what I'm going to do, the way I'm going to frame this, I'm going to break it down into pretty much three different categories. First, we're going to just talk about the physical dimensions between the three. We're going to kind of go over the software that both of them have and then kind of discuss the workflow, the differences between the workflow between the two. So first off, Captain Obvious here, uh, the, the biggest difference between the MPC-1 and the SP-404 is, of course, how it looks dimension-wise. You can see that the, the MPC-1 is a larger device, it's bigger than the SP-404. This one, the, the Mark II, it is made, it is built for mobility. It's, it's a smaller device, it is built for mobility, it, it has batteries to be used as a portable device, whereas the MPC-1 does not have batteries. Now, when we're talking about just physically and the way it looks, the way it feels, a couple of things that stick out to me and that are similar between both of them. I like the buttons on here. I like the fact that you can feel and you can touch those buttons. The pads on here and the knobs, they both have kind of a similar layout in that I, I feel like these are both made for right-handed people. So if I'm using the Mark II, this main button, this main enter button, which is also a knob, is on the right side the same here on the uh, MPC-1. Even, even here on the Mark II, all of the specialty buttons that aren't pads, they are on the right side. So in my opinion, it feels like both of these are kind of made for right-handed people. Now, interestingly enough, uh, they both have these four knobs on them. And with the Mark II, versus the MPC-1, I would say this is uh, these are limited knobs in their rotation in that there is a definite one side and another side that you can go to a limit to how you can turn it. You can't go a full 360 degrees, I would say maybe around 300 degrees of turn on here. Whereas on the MPC-1, this is kind of an infinite knob. So I can continue to twist and twist and twist either way back and forth and there's no limit. It's a full 360 degrees of rotation on the knobs. Now on the, on the SP-404, this, this main knob, this enter knob, this one is a 360 knob. You can twist and turn it no matter how far left or right. This also acts as a button so you can push down on this button. Now that's the same with the the MPC-1. This is a center knob and it also you can press down and it acts as a button. Now there are a couple of differences when it comes to the buttons and the layout here. On the Mark II all of the buttons on here are pretty much made of the same material. They have kind of that rubbery feel to them and that's each of the buttons no matter what the size is. On the Mark II, the buttons are different. So the actual pads have kind of that rubbery texture that you would see on the 404, but then all of the functional buttons, they are this kind of hard plastic. And I don't want to necessarily get into what's better or what's not better between the two, but I can I can just say that this noise right here, this clicking noise, when you're pushing these buttons, I really, really like that. It's something about that, that, that noise and that click that is a little more satisfying on this one than on the 404, which is really just kind of the rubber and softer kind of buttons. So each of these have the 16 pad array for samples or notes, whatever you put into them. The pads on the MPC-1 are a little bit bigger, um, but I, I will say that between the MPC-1 and the SP-404, as far as finger drumming goes, it, there isn't that much of a difference. Even though these are smaller, 
I don't have a trouble. I don't have any trouble, you know, getting to a particular pad or accidentally hitting a second pad while I'm trying to hit one pad. I don't have, of course, don't have this problem with this one because the pads are bigger, but I think the size of these pads on the SP404, good size, even though they're smaller. Now, as you can see, they both have different size screens. So the MPC1 has a pretty large rectangular screen. This is a touch screen as well. Um, and even though right here on the SP404, it, is, it looks like a circular screen, that is really just kind of a circular window that has a smaller rectangle screen inside. When it comes to things such as inputs and outputs, there is a clear difference between the two. So starting off with the, with the SP404, uh, if you look at the top of, of the 404, you can see that it has a couple of inputs and outputs. So there is a line out left and right, line in left and right, that is for the, uh, the 1 4th inch phono. And then you also have an input slash output through this USB-C. So that is kind of a digital interface that the 404 has. MIDI in and out, this is also another input and output, but this is primarily to connect peripheral devices into it, i.e. some sort of synthesizer into it for MIDI control. If I flip the SP404 over, you can see right here that it still has inputs and outputs. So these are the two phono output for phono jacks, the 1 4th and 1 8th. This is a singular input for a 1 8th jack, sorry, 1 4th jack. And this also uh, has a switch between a mic and guitar. So depending on the type of input that you put into here, you put it to mic, it has kind of a preamp that will amplify the sound. There's also a little gain knob here to control the amount of the input that goes in this hole right here. Last part is right here on the side where you can see there is a slot for an SD card. And I guess since we're talking about SD cards, just to go into, before we transition into the MPC-1, the biggest difference between these two is the amount of external hard drive that you can use. The SP-404 Mark II, you can only go up to a 32 gigabyte SD card. That's as large of storage that you can have externally. Though the 404 has an internal storage of 16 gigabytes. The MPC-1 on the other hand, I have not seen any limitation on how large of storage you can have on here. It can do external hard drives and it can also do an SD card. And I have plugged in an SD card as large as 128 gigabytes. Um, I believe if I had something like a terabyte size SD card, it would be able to read it no problem. So looking at the top of the MPC-1, right here you have your power button, there's your power adapter, and right next to that is an ethernet port. So you can plug in an ethernet cable, it can connect directly to another drive, or you can connect this directly to a switch or a router and it will have internet access. Next to that is a USB slot right here. And this is the other uh, USB as well. So this one is kind of a, a universal USB adapter. You can plug in a hard drive, you can plug in a MIDI instrument. Uh, you can plug this into another computer through this USB. This is primarily used to plug into other peripheral devices. Now going a little bit further across, you can see here are the two MIDI ports, the traditional, more traditional MIDI ports. And this is the CV gate inputs right here. Now, of course, these are for those peripheral devices, synthesizers and whatnot. Then you have kind of the traditional one fourth phono inputs and outputs. And this is kind of the gain knob here for those inputs and outputs right here. So it's, it's, it's 
one output for the phono and one input. This is one of the, my, my issues with the MPC-1 is that the master volume is up here at the top. I am not a fan of it being across this strip. I feel like this strip is kind of more a utility place. A master volume is something I would utilize or play with a lot more often. I wish it wasn't here at the top. Okay, so flipping it over, uh, there is of course an SD card slot right here. And I guess another thing I don't really like about it is it uses the 1 8 phono jack and it doesn't have the option for the 1 4 But headphones are headphones, the 1 jack as well as the SD card slot. Now that we've talked about the overall physical appearance of both of them, we're going to get into kind of the software, the way that it operates. So off the back, I'm going to turn both of them on at the same time, and you're going to just see off the bat just kind of the difference between them from turning them on. Now, as you can already see, with the SP404, the startup sequence is a lot faster. It just powers on, it starts up, and you're already ready to get into it. The MPC, on the other hand, it is an operating system. So it is, it has time to load everything in in order to start up. So off the rip, as stated before, one big difference between the two is, of course, the screen. And you can see right here on the MPC-1, it has this huge screen on here, which is also a touch screen. So anything that you can do via using the buttons on the MPC-1, you can do it here on by using the touch screen. I don't believe that the same, the saying is the same for the buttons. I don't think there's everything that you can do via touch screen that you can do through shortcuts and using the buttons. When you talk about the SP404, on the other hand, there is no touch screen option. So every function, everything that you have to do on the 404, you have to do it by pushing buttons and manipulating buttons on the device. So I guess if I had to compare between the two as far as how the software works, the MPC-1 is essentially a doll in the box. This does everything that you could expect from any sort of installed software on your computer. The difference is this is fully encased and all this computer does is make music. The SP404, on the other hand, it doesn't act much like a computer. It acts more like this is firmware on a device. So um, it, it, it's a limitation in some ways, but it makes for a more simpler way or a more direct way of beat making. With the MPC-1, since it has, it essentially has an operating system and it has a DAW installed in it, even when you go like to the menu, you can see this has an entire array of things that you can do. A lot of stuff that you can utilize on the MPC-1 and do on here that you can't necessarily do on the SP-404. One thing that I did notice between the two is that with the MPC-1, and we're going back to talking about hard drives, with the MPC-1, I can put any hard drive inside of it and it will read that hard drive as long as it's just basically formatted. With the SP-404, it will not read an SD card unless it is formatted by the SP-404. So I have taken this formatted SP-404, put files on it and routed it to the MPC-1. MPC-1 read it correctly, read it with, with ease and no issue. Any SD card, no matter what's on it, I have to format it in order for it to work with the SP-404. When it comes to menu diving, it can get a little tricky with the SP-404, which kind of makes the button mashing that much more important. And really, mostly when we're talking about the menu, we're really talking about importing and exporting with the 404. As far as menu diving is concerned, I mean, 
You can go to different utilities. Of course, it has those options. You have things like your effects. You can deal with those options, but they all have to be manipulated by using the knob. And then there isn't a lot of menu diving where you can get lost in something that you go into. Just hitting the exit button, you go right back to the original screen where you are and you just have that starting point again. With the MPC-1, when it comes to menu diving, you can put yourself into a situation where you can get lost. Of course, you always have the menu or main to bring you right back to this area as well, but it has a lot more propensity for you to kind of get lost with all these different options and features. Another difference between the two is the terminology. As far as the MPC-1, it talks in terms of sequences, tracks and programs when you're dealing with the 404 you're talking more just in terms of pads and patterns so again sp sample sampler player 404 it is a very direct a more simple means of utilizing and beat making the mpc1 has a lot more terminology and a lot more options which makes can make things a little more complex. The SP404 has a particular set of effects. Some of them of course are accessed right here at the button but then with the multi effects you can kind of choose different effects. The MPC1 has a suite of effects as well. The difference being the 404s is in terms of a bus. So there are only four bus in the MPC-1, the two that are kind of the, the live live ones, and then the other four, the other two are kind of embedded in the 404. When it comes to effects on the MPC-1, the MPC-1 being a DAW can be made as an effect on a track. You can use an effect on a sequence you can use an effect on a program. You can even use different effects on each pad that you push on the MPC-1. Again, it is due to the fact that this is a computer, this is a DAW in the box. You have a lot more versatility as far as effects and just a lot, a lot more options. Overall, I had to give my impressions between the MPC-1 and the SP-404 Mark II. I would say that the MPC-1 is, for all intents and purposes, a standalone studio. This is a DAW in the box. So you can make more refined music with the MPC-1. It's a little bit more professional. I would say that the SP-404 Mark II, it is an instrument. It is something that you use to create, something you use to conceptualize, and, and honestly, I enjoy playing with the SP-404 more than I do with the MPC-1, even though I feel like the MPC-1 has more to offer as far as beat making and music making in general. The MPC-1 is limited by the fact that it's not portable. Um, it's a larger device, it's heavier. The, the 404, since it also has batteries on it, you can essentially take it with you anywhere and you can play it anywhere. I guess between the two, the MPC-1 is powerful. The SP-44 is inspirational. The MPC-1 is utilitarian. The SP-404 is creative. Both of these combined, I feel like I am gonna be able to do a lot I think what the MPC-1 lacks in things such as effects, flexibility, ease of use, the SP-404 can complement that. In addition, a lot of the things that I want to add with my 404 Mark II that I, I can't necessarily get to or I would have to do a lot of different workarounds to get to, the MPC-1 can get me there with ease. So. I think these two are just complementary devices that should be used together. We'll see, you know, just based on what I make in the future. And uh, I'm just looking forward to learning more about this device and then learning how to integrate the two in order to make music. 
So that's all I have concerning the differences between the MPC-1 and the SP-404 Mark II. What are your thoughts? Which device do you think is the better one? How do you utilize the MPC-1 and the Mark II together? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, peace.